That's kind of conversation between the soul. That's conversation between the soul and the night. Hello, Prestige Heads, and welcome to American Prestige. I'm in here, uh, here alone because Derek has something to do, but I'm very excited to welcome to the podcast Frank Castigliola. Frank is the Board of Trustees Distinguished Professor uh, of History at the University of Connecticut, the author of many, many books, uh, including most recently George F. Kennan, A Life Between Worlds, which is what we're going to talk about today. So Frank, thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you for being here. It's really an honor. I, I really... I'm impressed with your podcast, impressed with your own work, and I'm <laughs> glad to be here. Always glad well, to I'm talk very about impressive. It. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> true. true. <laughs> well, and and Kenan is highly relevant to today. Yes, absolutely. And and we're going to talk about that because actually one of the one of the things that I wanted to start with is that Kennan is is someone who's like the doyen of foreign policy, you know, someone who's going to I think be be read in a 100 years um unlike I would say someone like Kissinger, you know, Kennan might be the big 20th century foreign relations thinker whether he you know, takes his place alongside someone like Machiavelli or Thucydides, only time will tell, but he has that sort of corpus. So, could you talk to me about who, why is Kennan important to today? Uh, and particularly, there's so much work on him and what you thought this work was lacking. So first, why is Kennan important? Who was he? And then where do you see yourself fitting into the large corpus that has been written about him? Kennan is important for two main reasons. And superficially, they're contradictory, but they're really not. Uh, he's most famous for authoring the long telegram 1946, and the uh, so-called Mr. X article published in Foreign Affairs in July 1947. And those are the documents that laid out the doctrine of containment, that the way to deal with uh, Soviet expansion was not to go to war, as some people feared might have to be the case, and not to appease, quote-unquote, appease Russia by accepting further Soviet expansion, but rather to contain, to contain the limit of Soviet expansion. And Kennan, now, there's a certain amount of controversy. Kennan meant containment to be primarily through economic and political means. But for reasons I can discuss, it, containment was interpreted by American policymakers as also including a heavy military component. And a lot of people cited the necessity of containment as a rationale for the American military buildup, uh, development of the hydrogen bomb after the uh, atomic bomb and so forth. Uh, after 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 World War II, uh, so that's one reason Kennedy was important for the as author of the Containment Doctrine. But I think what's what's crucial here, and this is part of my own contribution, what's crucial here is that Kennan understood containment to be an if then proposition, an if then proposition. If the Soviets were contained, then Kennan thought it was important, indeed crucial, for the peace of the world to move beyond containment to negotiations with the Russians, to try to find compromises, to diffuse tensions, lessen tensions, lessen the risks of nuclear war, something he was very concerned about, and try to arrive at some kind of workable arrangement. That second part of Kennan, I think, has not been emphasized enough, particularly by Kennan's authorized biographer, John Gaddis, who uh, certainly appreciated Kennan the Cold Warrior, but not Kennan who became the critic of the Cold War because he thought the Cold War really should have come to an end decades before it did. This is the paradox of Kennan, because I do think you could read the long telegram. To me, if you just read it in context, it's quite a right-wing document. I really think it is. It's, it's very paranoid, and I think as um, I, everyone should read Frank's book on personal politics. It's really fantastic, and, and sort of the emotion of Kennan, which you've written about as well. It's very clearly linked to his strange wartime experience and sort of this love-hate relationship he had with ordinary Russians and his own, you know, if I recall correctly, his friends and mistress, you know, getting getting messed up by the Soviet state. But he does turn into this critic by the mid-1950s. So like you said, there's...